morning guys uh today i got a got lucky and uh managed to get an off day uh, those don't come very often for me but uh i took off yesterday and today trying to get caught up on some stuff around here at the house and uh today i gotta get up to the mill i am completely out of wood to build some of my orders that uh, i've got coming in so i've got to get on the mill get some wood meal get it in the kiln try to go ahead and get it dried so that's what I'm gonna be working on today. Uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take me. I'm hoping I can be done with the milling by maybe around lunch or so, and then go spend the rest of the day in the shop. But you never know how things are gonna go. So uh, we are fixing to fire the Okaboda up and uh, get up there and get started this morning. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around.
All right, guys, for some of those uh, of you that are running mills, I want to show you this blade, how slick, smooth that guy is. You can look right there in the edge of that tooth. There's a little bit of, little bit of buildup, but very, very little right there. And like I said, I'm no pro, guys, but when I started having issues with sap buildup on my blades, uh, right after that is when I decided I was going to go with a with a wider set. And I went with a 15,000 set and hadn't had that problem. Like I said, I'm not I, I'm not as uh, experienced at saw milling and as knowledgeable as some guys, but I can tell you this: uh, I understand basic physics. And with a thinner set, the chances of that blade right there rubbing up against a piece of wood as you're cutting is a lot better than if you have a, a, a bigger crack in that board. And by changing the set and widening that set, you decrease the, the, the blade drag on the underside or under the top of that, up the top of that board. And so in doing so, the blade doesn't get as hot. If the blade doesn't get as hot, <clears throat> it's not gonna cook the sap out of these trees and cause it to stick to the blade as it goes through. And then as it comes back around and runs under the water or under the diesel or whatever, uh, it's gonna cool it off and it's gonna cause that stuff over a period of time, it's gonna cause it to build up on that blade. That's my theory. It may be hogwash, I don't know. But all I know is you've seen it there. I just skipped this whole uh, nice, you know, yellow pine out with it and uh my blade's still shiny so that's what that is but i just want to stop for a minute and uh and mention that to some of you guys that may have your own meal another thing that you may have noticed about the way i've got mine set is this wide set it does leave a lot of sawdust on the log which i'm not concerned with uh, just as you can see sawdust just kind of falls where it will out here but that's another thing that uh that i can say about that wider set is it will leave a lot more sawdust but i'm going to wipe the sawdust off of these whether it's a little bit or a lot it really doesn't matter to me so i just go from there uh but i'm going to flip this guy around i think one more time uh i may go ahead i i i, I like the way the wood's looking so far so i'm trying to get down below all these uh these bugs I done let get in it and get into that heart. So <laughs> that's the reason I'm I'm not really concerning myself with wasting a little bit of this wood. I put it over here on my 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 other stack against the wall to be used for miscellaneous stuff. But this stuff I actually need it to look pretty good. So I'm going to uh, try to figure out exactly how I'm going to run this. Let me get my measuring tape. So these are 14 inches. So if I can split this into two seven inch wide boards, that would work for what I'm wanting to do. So I got a 14 by 14. So I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I think I'm gonna drop down and make two seven inch cants out of this and then knock the boards off of it. Uh, do them seven inches wide. That order. That ought to work for what I'm doing. Or I'm actually, I may just leave them like they are. Because uh, then I can split them in the table saw. I do want to make a couple of beehives out of some of this if i got enough of it. Uh, the bottom edge of this thing is going to be full of heart. I can see that already. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to slap them off in 14 inch wide. We'll see how that looks. I can always go back. Split them if I need to.
All right, guys, I stopped for a break for a minute. I learned a lesson uh, last year here in Alabama. If you, uh, if you ain't careful with this humidity and the heat, I was building a, some stuff last year and wound up working myself into a kidney stone. So I'm trying to avoid that this year. So I'm taking me a little break and cool down, get some water, that kind of thing. But while I'm doing my break, I also, for some of y'all that, that are newer at this, and like I said, if you're if you're a pro, by all means, guys, just disregard what I'm saying if you if you already know it. But uh, I just wanted to stop and show you uh, the set, and these are all my resharpened blades. I resharpen these using my wood miser BMS 25. So uh, this is not; these are not brand new blades. I don't have; I've got some brand new blades, and if you look right over there in that box with the driftwood up against it, that's where my brand new blades stay. Uh, I haven't used any of them since I got my sharpener and, and my setter. Uh, when I first got my sharpener, I was a little uh, disheartened because I thought I didn't know what I was doing. But then I realized that sharpening is only half the battle. The set makes all the difference. I would honestly say that I would rather have a properly set blade that is dull than an improperly set blade that is sharp. Uh, because you're going you're gonna to cut better with a properly set blade that is dull than you will with one that is not set right and as sharp as can be. So I'm just going to show you. Uh, Y'all seen what all I've done, and I haven't changed the blade yet. I was actually going to consider changing it. Uh, so I was doing a quick little uh, little flat cut test here, and I've put my my uh, level on this wood. And like I said, for some for some old pine, uh, she's cutting fairly flat there for rough cut lumber. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna. You know, if I do anything too severe with it, I'm going to have to run through the planer, but I do that anyway. But, uh, but she's still cutting flat. And uh, just to show you the blade here, I still got water beading up on the blade. And it's as slick as a baby's butt there. So that is, uh, that's just water, guys. I don't, I don't run diesel fuel. Uh, I do too much with cutting boards and stuff like that. And just to be honest with you, I'm just not a fan of, of diesel fuel all over the ground and all over my clothes. Uh, and water works, so I don't see a need in changing it. But uh, I'm going to take that little water break down to the house, get me some ice water, sit on the porch for a little while. And then uh, once I get that done, we'll come back up here and uh, get back to work. But uh, wife's orders, more water breaks, at least two glasses of water every break. So, you know, got to do it, guys. All right, guys, break's over. And uh, back to cutting some wood. I'm going to set the camera over here and uh, get a little video while I finish this log up. All right, guys, on that last cut, uh, I started noticing a little vibration and a little wobble in the blade. And typically, that either means that the blade is about to break or it's bent. And seeing that the blade didn't get bent, I suspect that little pop that I heard just a second ago when I disengaged the blade was the blade breaking. Uh, like I said, these blades have been with me for a while. Uh, so I'm not real sure exactly what went on here, but uh, it does appear the blade is broke. So there's one for the scrap pile right there. Uh, I don't know how old this blade is exactly, but it is definitely one of my older ones for it to pop like that. So I'm just gonna try to pull this thing out of here. And that's pretty much how I run them <laughs> until they pop. 
uh, it was cutting really good right up until the point that it broke. So I did start noticing a little vibration. Uh, it's, it's actually still sharp, but I noticed a little vibration right there at the end. Uh, and if you start feeling a vibration and you start seeing your blade kind of, kind of bouncing a little bit, just know it's probably fixing to break. And that's exactly what that one did. Uh, and if you notice it didn't break in the valley, it broke just the other side of the weld right there. Uh, so on the back side of the tooth, almost halfway up the tooth right there. So this blade didn't have a whole lot of fractures in it or nothing. I don't see any fractures in it, but you know, it happens after a while. So this one gets thrown in my pile over here and uh, it'll, it'll get used as a decoration or something later on, but this blade's done, so I'm gonna go get another one. pine is collecting pretty good inside the uh, inside the saw head so making a bit of a mess get my wrench The sawdust is causing an issue. So I'm gonna try to rake some of this out of here. Right, I'm gonna crank it up and I'm gonna spin it a little bit and I'm gonna recheck my uh, torque wrench and make sure I'm at the right torque. Turn the fuel on, it helps. Alright, 
torque looks good on it. So, uh, Yeah, I wish there was a way I could keep up with uh, how many times I've used those blades, but I usually just sharpen them until they get to a certain uh, thickness, and then I'll I'll toss them, or if I find cracks in them, I'll toss them. But other than that, get what you can get out of them. They're not cheap. Hey guys, I'm going to share this, uh, the performance of this blade with you. <clears throat> this is one of my resharps. Like I said, all, all I'm running is resharps. Unless I, if I run out of resharps, or if, let's say if I've got a really, really, really expensive piece of wood, uh, used to, I would save those uh, new blades. But to be honest, now that I've kind of got the sharpening figured out, I trust my blades better than I do new ones. So uh, as long as they haven't been you know, used too many times, they can start getting too many times, you never know when they're going to break like that blade did a minute ago. But I'm going to try to find a place to put the camera here and show you how this thing's ripping through this log. Uh, like I said, this is my sharpening. These are 9-degree blades uh, with a 15,000th set. And that, I just made one cut with this blade, and I'm going to let you watch the rest of them if I can do it without destroying my camera.
All right, guys, as you can tell, uh, the set I run, it does leave a lot of sawdust. Now, this is on the top board, so you got a lot of drip coming out of the out of the carriage too but this is some uh that's some pretty good pine here i'll be using this to make uh some stove cover projects that i got a customer that order those things from me weekly and it's all i can do to keep up and keep those things made and so i'm constantly having to come up with uh more wood and i cut these one inch and the reason i'm cutting them one inch is I want them to be the ending dimensions to be three quarter of an inch. So I made them a quarter. I made them a quarter over. That way, in the event that they try to twist or turn or cup or anything, which they shouldn't. I don't have, normally have problems with pine in the kiln. Uh, I take and uh, when I stack and sticker this stuff, I put a uh, I put a couple of cap boards underneath and on top. And I ratchet strap it and I've got 3,000 pound ratchet strap that I used and I tighten those babies up until they start digging into that top cap board and then as the wood dries I go in and uh, tension it on down but as you can see this this is uh, some good heart pine right here it's got a lot of uh, got a lot of lighter in it there and that's gonna make for some really cool uh, stuff I also have plans to make a few more of my beehives. And I like using this heart pine for those beehives because it keeps it from rotting as easy. Uh, and just, they look cool. I don't care who you are. Uh, lighter pine, heart pine like this, it just it just looks cool. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel a few of these more of these boards off and show you what they, they look like. Uh, they're a little heavy for one hand throw that out there uh, but you can see that that heart on that little bad spot that I had to cut off of that thing it's, it is uh, made for some interesting figure in that wood uh, but what I'll do once I get these down to the kiln I'm gonna I, I do a good cleaning here to try to get most of it off uh, because it may be a few hours before I get around to stacking it and sticking it so I'll go ahead and get most of it off here and when I get it down to the kiln I'll uh, go over it again before I put it in the kiln. And I've also got a blower that I use. I take that blower and try to blow any of the dust off of it. But I'll give it a little while for this dust to kind of dry up a little bit. And it doesn't take it doesn't take too long if you set it out in the sun for a few minutes that uh, this dust will dry on up a little. And uh, man, that's some that's some pretty wood right there. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get back to uh, cleaning this off and I'm going to stack it over here for the tractor to pick up. It's looking like we might get a little sprinkle and I've got to do some uh, rearranging in the kiln. So probably what I'll do is I'll just leave this laying here. Uh, and then once I get space in the kiln ready, I can come up here with the tractor, pick it up and tote it down there. So, but anyway, uh, I hope, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't already have your meal and you're thinking about getting one, maybe this will help you decide. Uh, if you've got a new a meal and you're kind of new to it, maybe I dropped a few little tidbits of information that'll help you. And as always, I started my YouTube channel trying to help people and help them understand and make life a little easier on them. So if you got any questions that I might can answer, feel free to hit me up and you know leave a comment or message me, and I'll try to help you and, and help you figure it out. Uh, but uh, but it's uh, it's really enjoyable. And uh, it can be really aggravating when things aren't going your way. Like I said, the, the, the blade that we broke today, you know, that's, that's the cost of doing business. I've probably used that blade five or six times. So, you know, it's a $25 blade. I got five uses out of it. That's five bucks, a, you know, a use. So I'm good with that. Uh, if it was a brand new blade, I'd be a little upset. But like I said, I don't know how old it is. But I know I bought my meal back in uh, April is when I actually got it delivered. And... Uh, all these blades that blades I bought when I bought the mill and all of them been resharpened countless times since April when I got the mill in last April not this April last April April a year ago so uh, but anyway hope you enjoyed it uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button I know my channel's a hodgepodge of different things man I got laser engraving going on I got making bee boxes going on I got saw milling I got honeybees uh, but <laughs> you know it is what it is 
I wake up every morning and never know what exactly uh, life's going to hold for that day. I do a little bit of everything. So if you like that kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. And you're not going to offend me if some of those videos don't interest you about the lasers and you don't watch those. But uh, please do hit the subscribe button. And, uh, I mean, you can even just uh, not, not even watch those videos if you don't want. But uh, I appreciate you. And have a good day. See ya.